Hi again then guys and welcome to another look back to the world of Project Gotham for another car review of course and this is a car that I find not just specifically this one but this kind of car fascinating in Project Gotham because Project Gotham for those who don't know never marketed itself as any kind of racing sim it's not even Simcade and it's certainly not a track day simulator of any kind and yet if you look at the third and fourth game in particular there seems to be a disproportionately high amount of cars which are never allowed on the street. The FXX, the DBR9, the Radical SR9, this one. That I think is pretty cool, because if you think about it, there actually are not that many street racing games where you can drive actual race cars. There are some, Test Drive Unlimited for instance, you've got the Audi A4 Touring car in there, but apart from those very select few, there don't tend to be as many street racing games as Project Gotham which have so many cars like this in there. Now the NSX GT2 takes it even a step further because not only is it a car which you could never take on the street, but to my knowledge, there is no version like this. Essentially like a, a homologated road version, if you will. Now the idea of that is fantastic. And of course, Gran Turismo did a very similar thing with the NSXR LM road car prototype, which was one of my favorite fictional cars from a design point of view of the entire Gran Turismo franchise. This idea of kind of a throwback to the homologated GT1 cars of the late 90s from Panos, Porsche, Mercedes, Lotus, and some of those other ones are actually, of course, in Project Gotham as well. The CLK GTR, the 911 GT1, the Elise GT1, and various others as well. The Panos, of course, so this is certainly among friends, but it's got a little bit of a different slant on those because, of course, it's not a GT1, it's, as the name suggests, a GT2 spec car. But with no livery, it's just red, and you could totally imagine this being some hardcore one-off road car that Honda could have made, or Acura even. Now, in terms of the spec, you can certainly tell that it's not on the same level as something like a Toyota GT1 road car, because, of course, being GT2, it's going to be heavier, it's not going to be as powerful, and that is absolutely true. You're looking at a 3.2-litre engine, just like the regular NSX, 375 horsepower, which, of course, is more even than the NSX Type R, but still, that's not ridiculously high. The weight is 1134 kilos, which, again, is modest, that's not that much lighter than a Maserati MC12 GT1 car, for instance, from the mid-2000s. So it's pretty well placed, and because the weight is quite reasonable, even though the power isn't massive, you're actually still running 331 horsepower per tonne. But I would say easily the two best things about this NSX are the price and the handling. Now, the handling is not surprising, but the price actually might be, because you'd think, well, the NSX was quite expensive in real life. A racing version, of course, is going to be expensive. This kind of fictionalized homologation equivalent, surely it would be six figures, maybe even seven. It's actually not. This is 85,000 credits, which is ridiculously well-priced, considering how good it actually is. And to put that into some perspective, the Farbau GTS is 125,000, the Noble M14 is 115,000, so it's actually really well-priced. Those cars have similar on-paper specs in some ways, and yet they simply do not have the cornering ability, especially the grip from, of course, great tyres, low weight and high downforce, that this one has. In fact, I would argue this is one of the easiest, hardcore, really fast cars in the game to drive. It's really forgiving, really beginner-friendly, and it clearly shows the amount of respect that the developers of the game have for the NSX, which of course is well-founded. It's a great car. And I also like, on that point of respect, that Project Gotham kind of gives the NSX the respect that usually a game like for instance, Gran Turismo would give to the Skyline instead, because the NSX is very good in Gran Turismo, but the GTR lineage is always first and foremost. In this game, though, the Skylines, the GTRs, you know, in the Project Gotham series overall, they're good, but this is given quite a, a place of honour, really, in this game. It's brilliant, to the point where, despite the fact it's got a good two, three, sometimes more hundred horsepower less, than a lot of the other top tier contenders like Koenigseggs, the Volkswagen Nardo and plenty of others, it can easily take on those cars through corners and even on a track like the Nordschleife or the full 24 hour circuit for instance, it's still the kind of machine that can go way beyond that 375 horsepower, almost in a way that makes it feel lighter than it actually is. 
And none of this is really a surprise to me. It wasn't even before I drove the car because I'd heard so much chatter from people who do love the Project Gotham series, especially Project Gotham 3, because so many people do seem to have a real soft spot for this car because, of course, it's not in Project Gotham 4, but I kind of wish it was because it would be a brilliant machine. It's nice to see something like a Honda be treated as this full-on exclusive hardcore exotic because you don't tend to think about that from Honda <laughs> and of course it's not real technically so yes and no you know what I mean it's a real race car it's not real in this form though but to have that kind of respect to be as good as it is in the game it's a refreshing change to see a Honda get that kind of attention. I would say that this car is a fantastic rival for something like the Lotus Elise GT1 even, which tends to be one of the slightly lower GT1 homologated cars. I wouldn't necessarily take on like a CLK GTR maybe in this thing, maybe the Panos on certain circuits, but even then the raw power of those cars gives them a pretty big advantage because they're also good through corners. But the point that I'm making is, in order to legitimately beat this car around the track, especially a very tight technical circuit where top-end power doesn't matter as much, you need to have a really good car because cars of a similar power level, even some with 400, 450 horsepower, they're going to struggle to beat this because it's a car that literally has the power of something like a Noble or a Wiesmann or a TVR but the performance is way beyond that. It has performance which can easily take on 500 even 600 horsepower cars and as I said sometimes even more. So if you do get the chance to go back to the older Project Gotham games and want to maybe try out some of these more unique cars that were not continued on then this one is definitely a highlight vehicle that you will want to check out. But that's it overall for my thoughts. Of course, if you love the NSX, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. And of course, stick around on the channel for more reviews from Project Gotham. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.